Welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse and joining us in the club on this day, on this fine, fine day, we welcome Tyler Joe Miller. Tyler Joe, how's it going? <laughs> it's going good. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I good. just had to find a quiet spot on my, uh, on my construction site to <laughs> be and able to do this. We were chatting a little bit before we officially started and we have never met before. So I was asking, do I call you Tyler? Do I say Tyler Joe? Is it TJ? <laughs> and that was a, a fun story that you told me about, uh, about TJ or Tyler Joe. It's, it's funny because a lot of people don't actually know. So it's, right. uh, it, it's one of those things where if people see me around, if, if people actually recognize my face now, which not a whole lot, but uh, you know, it's always, oh, Tyler Joe, Tyler Joe. And sometimes I don't answer because I'm not used to that yet but uh uh yeah no my i've always gone by tj my whole life but there's an actor and comedian with the name tj miller and uh i don't i don't want the uh the rep that he's got going right now so we decided right. to go with a safer bet but uh excellent yeah. and you're new to the canadian country music scene what a year 2020 was with your first two singles both going to number one pillow talking and i would be over me too that must be just a dream come true yeah, it was someone's dream come true. It was, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's always been, I've always loved music. And so it's, it's pretty cool because I think before I ended up getting signed uh, to MDM and, and started doing my own thing, I was playing for other artists, but I never imagined, uh, you know, I was just a backup like guitarist or backup vocals or mandolin, whatever they needed uh, me to play. And it was kind of, I never imagined that I'd be doing my own stuff and that, that that it would get to this point and that you know hell a number one and two number ones off the top like it's pretty crazy uh, and, and it, it's funny because I'm watching it all unravel through a pandemic uh, and while like at work on the construction site all of a sudden we find out you know all this crazy stuff that's going on so it's it's pretty cool when you were playing with with other bands backing up other artists or even when you first picked up a guitar, did you have that drive though? You wanted to be out front. You wanted to be a solo artist doing your own stuff. I actually wanted to be an actor when I was younger. That was always my dream. I loved acting, like that was my thing. And then I uh, picked up a guitar one day and uh, learned Zeppelin and that was it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> The gateway. And so, uh, exactly, yeah, Jimmy Page was my hero. And so, um, uh, yeah, but I, I actually had a band back in the day doing kind of alternative rock sort of stuff. And, and I was the front man for, for that band as well. Um, and yeah, it, it went great and I loved it. And then I took a step back from doing the front man stuff and, uh, just got really, really enjoyed just kind of being the support on stage with people. And, and, you know, you don't have that responsibility of having to remember all the words and this and this and, and so it was just kind of fun to be able to be the backup person. And I really enjoyed harmonizing other people. So, um, you know, I was happy to just be the backup guy. And then MDM caught me off guard and, uh, <laughs> you know, heard, heard me sing in some video online. And, and that was that. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I wouldn't say it was like my dream to be like a front man, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's pretty cool, um, you know, that people know my songs. And they know stuff that I've written and they can sing it back and, and that sort of thing. So I can't wait to get playing live shows. We're talking with Tyler Joe Miller in the KX Country Clubhouse today. And you talk about Zeppelin being kind of one of your first favorite bands and Jimmy Page. How did you kind of go from the, from the rock guy to some 90s alternative guy to having a very traditional country sound to, uh, to your songs? I mean, I grew up on, uh, I grew up on 90s country. And so uh, I got, we got a couple of family cabins up north in BC here. And um, we just basically grew up listening to country music. And so um, <clears throat> my mom's side of the family, especially like just loves the country music. Dad's side, kind of more of the rock stuff. But I think I got some family in, up in uh, Northern Ontario and they uh, are pretty redneck so they uh, <laughs> uh they definitely like the country music if there was one or say two 90s artists you would love to work with collaborate on a song with what what couple 90s artists would uh, would be cool for tyler joe miller to cut a song with if we're dreaming here i would say we're dreaming Bra brad paisley garth brooks those are my cool. two 
Yeah, Good absolutely. Point. How is uh, quarantine life for for yourself and and what you've been going through? What we've all been going through for almost a year now. It's been interesting. <laughs> I'm very extroverted, so I I need to be out. I need to be around people. So it's been a very interesting experience for the last <laughs> year. And so, uh, yeah, it's luckily I've been able to keep working, which has been great. And so we've got a, a small crew that we work with. There's just four of us. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's been great that we still at least have each other because uh, we're all really good friends too. So it's, it's, we still have that, you know, can still hang out with your friends, but it's because we're working eight hours a day sort of thing. Um, so it hasn't been too bad where I still have that <laughs> human connection. But uh, sure. but it, it definitely is weighing on me a bit where I'm like, man, I want to go out. I want to do this. I want to do this. So it's um, yeah, I, I would say I've, I've been pretty lucky because I know there's a lot of people that one don't have the opportunity to work still or, uh, you know, it's they just don't have a lot of work coming in or they're not you know living alone, not <clears throat> able to be around people and stuff. So it's uh, I would say I'm definitely lucky. And the hard work really is still to come for you. You got to get on the road. You got to play the shows. You got to meet all the fans. You got to get on a bus and drive across the country. Like there's a lot of work ahead for you once this pandemic ends. That's what I hear. Sounds like I'll be taking a lot of time off. <laughs> yeah, it's been funny because a lot of, you know, I have a lot of interviews and people be like, oh, so like, can you, you know, I bet you can't wait to hit the road again. I'm like, I haven't played a show. <laughs> we got two number ones under our belts, but I, I still haven't played a show. Uh, That's crazy. So it, it would just be nice to uh, have that at all. One thing I think is is really cool that you're doing, uh, uh, TJ, is the uh, the Climb Outreach Society. Uh, tell us a little bit about that amazing work that you, that you're doing. Your own your own nonprofit foundation. It's uh, it's something that I have been doing for the last I think five years or so now, and. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's a passion that I didn't know that I had until I went and did it. <clears throat> and so it's, uh, sorry, I keep on clearing my throat. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> a lot of dust in this house. Um, yeah, the, the climb is, so we, we basically are trying to crowdfund for humanitarian projects around the world. That's, that's our dream. That's what we're trying to get to. <clears throat> right now, oh my, my, losing my voice here. <clears throat> right now we are based in Guatemala. So we uh, do all of our hands-on work down there and we partner uh, with an organization called the hope of life and we sponsor two villages. So we get to go back to these same villages every time we go down uh, which is, is great because I think that um, you know, a big important part of all of it is having that long-term relationship with these villages and these people because I just, I can't stand the short-term trips that it's just like, take some photos, you know, and put them on Facebook and I did this and this, but it's like, well, if you're not leaving anything behind, like, is it just an experience? And I can take that as vol volunteerism, which uh, I don't agree with. And so what, what we wanted to do, we went, you know what, we can't be down there for a huge amount of time every time, but if we do a couple weeks or a week, whatever it is, but we do it consistently and do it a couple times a year, or at least once every year and we still continue this uh, long-term relationship with them, like that's great. And so that's what we've been doing. And we've actually seen uh, two villages in the last five years uh, go from, you know, sewage running through the streets to, uh, you know, uh, like they're, they're self-sustainable now, which is crazy. And, you know, they had a school that one of them had a school that uh, the kids couldn't even go into because it was so hot. There's no ventilation. Teachers wouldn't even come to this village to teach. And so uh, it's, it's been pretty cool. The, the opportunities we've had to be able to play a small part in, in helping these people get a little bit forward. So, um, and it's cool because we get to go um, come alongside of them. And some of the people that, um, you know, we're building these homes for, cause we build homes, we build schools, we, do baby rescues for kids that are malnourished. Um, we do kind of like that sort of thing, child sponsorship, um, uh, scholarships for kids that want to go to, to college or even high school that they're not able to pay for. Uh, and it's been pretty cool to kind of see all this stuff come to life. And uh, sometimes when we're building the homes, 
the guys from the village will come and just like they don't even know whose house they're building but they'll just come and grab a shovel or just start helping out and so it's kind of cool that we get to uh, do this together with them, which is really important that's, to us. So that's awesome and, and great work. Uh, the Climb Outreach Society, and uh, you can look uh, into that on Google and uh, and see how uh, how you can help out uh, TJ and his crew and the great work that they do. Okay, some rapid fire here, uh, TJ, as we wind things down. Favorite all time TV show? Oh, Lost. Favorite all time movie? Patch Adams. Love Patch Adams, good one. <laughs> Uh, your favorite hockey team? Ooh, this is uh, this is split. I got to support hometown Canucks, right? But I'm also a huge Ottawa Senators fan. Oh, okay, <laughs> that doesn't go over so well. That Sens fan stuff in KX Country, TJ. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's I okay. Cut my mouth shut. <laughs> That's okay. And uh, and your all time favorite artist? All time Brad Paisley. Favorite artist. Brad Paisley, number one. Number one. Awesome. Yeah. Well, TJ, Tyler, Joe Miller, thank you so much for joining us in the KX Clubhouse. Um, it's been great to meet you. Great to chat with you. Continued success. And we look forward to uh, life getting back to normal, life on the road where you can get on the bus and get on stage and we can, uh, we can see you live and, uh, and say hello again in person. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.